Hello, everybody. <sighs> it's Distant Waves. It's the last recording of 2019. Oh, this should be God. hitting your feeds right before the new year. And, if and it we've got... We've fucked up. And we've got some 2020 predictions, wish lists, albums and artists to look forward to. As always, my name is Ritalin. You got Dominic here. Yep. Good, good shit. Yep. Good yeah. shit. That was, that was, that was... And Trex. Trex is there too. <laughs> yep, yep. Thanks, thanks for it on. If you which, you will never know. <laughs> I'm Dominic. How's it going? Trex, I'm pretty well. And I'm Dominic as well. Sorry, my glitch didn't get fixed. No, I'm Dominic. No, I'm Dominic. Okay. Okay, you can be Dominic. Anyway. I don't really want to be Dominic. So 2020. Let's, let's, let's talk about 2020. What are we looking forward to in 2020? You know what I'm not looking and looking forward to, although I am happy to be pleasantly surprised. Uh, surprised is you, I know looking damn, back. damn, no damn straight they're gonna rush out a Tones and I album next year. Every time, every time Australia gets a really popular artist that's like just really recently started, they rush out putting the album into the next year. With Amy Shark, yeah. once she got her e- EP out. They rushed out that album next year. Tess Saltana, the same thing. And, you know, damn straight it's going to happen in Tones and I. Now, that Tess Saltana album turned out to be a pleasant surprise, and I actually enjoyed that album a lot. And Tones and I could actually change the beat of that. And I know you two know who Tones and I are, because she's currently number one on Spotify and has been for the last, like, 20 weeks. I've heard Tones and I before. I have not. I don't use Spotify. Uh, It's still popular worldwide. I have not been too fond of her music. I actually don't hate Dance Monkey as much as other people have been hating it, but I did hate The Kids Are Coming. I thought that was a real real shit song. And I'm happy to be pleasantly surprised and this album turned out to be quite enjoyable. Even mediocre at best would be a good surprise to me. But I know they're going to rush it out. It's not going to be ready to be released, but it will be released anyway. And that is going to be my my least... Prepared for, or not prepared for, my least wished Looking album. forward to? Yeah, least looking forward to. Well, you know what they didn't rush out? They didn't, they didn't rush out Thelma Plum. No, they didn't rush out Thelma Plum, and it turned out to be, it is a good album. I do have my faults with the album, but it is a good album. You know who I deserves hope... to have an album rushed out, though, is Aiden Alexander, because he's literally been talking on his Twitter about how he wants to release an album like a year and a half ago. And we used to go to talk shows and talk about, oh yeah, it's coming out this year. Or maybe, I don't know. I'm going to put out it's the like, album, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping like, for I want to release more songs. songs. Another Petite League album. Petite League. Uh, an, an, a band I'm particularly looking forward to if they released an album or an, an EP or something is the band Fourth Wanderers. Which I have not brought up on this podcast yet, but I want to do their album. Never mind. Man, I've Real never quick, heard an album called Never Mind before. Real no, quick, it's Never you... Mind. Ah, uh, Never Mind. Never, no, never mind. mind. What is what is Petit League going to name their album? What baseball thing has not been used yet? Well, I mean, Rattler isn't really a baseball. It's a rattlesnake. Isn't there like a oh, rattle like a rattling bat thing? Rattlesnake, rattlesnake. Rattlesnake. I don't know. And rips one into the night isn't really uh, isn't really baseball either. I don't think. I thought that was like you you ripped a home run into the night. Could be. I it could just be ripping drugs into the night. I don't know. I so, guess. Bong rips into the night. On the note of rattlesnakes, although it seems unlikely because they are doing some massive tour shows in uh, America next year. Although, with how prolific they usually are, I am hoping that King Gizzard puts out some new albums next year. Even if it's just one, or even if it's just a song. That'd be cool. We can cover that one as well. We'd be covering all the others. Usually, they don't take years off. I think 2018 was the only year since they started that they hadn't actually released an album in that year. And they had released an album on literally the day before 2018. So, it wasn't like everyone was too, too thirsty. And like they released five albums in 2017. They deserve a little rest. 
anyway, actual band I'm looking forward to releasing their album pretty soon is of Montreal's new album, You Are Fun, or You're Fun, capital letters, whatever. I cannot get into the singles. I just, like, I, I listen to them and then I forget them. I have not listened to uh, them. They seem enjoyable, like, 80s synth pop tunes. I'm interested to see how far it goes. I don't know. I feel like Of Montreal is one of those ones where you go deep into the discography, and even even lousy with Sylvie and Briar, which is quite new. But when uh, you go deep into it, you find all the enjoyable stuff, but as you go newer and newer and newer, it's just too repetitive and too forgettable. I think it's the thing where you find kind of like the niche that you like of theirs. Yeah. And you kind of I, 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 I think I think Lousy with Sylvie and Briar was a, a kind of like a break out of that, like a rare right step. Because that album, Perhaps. front uh, front to back, is really good. But I've, I mean, this comes from listening to a shit ton of their albums and just days and everything, and having done that full ranking that I did of them. Yeah. Coming into well, you didn't listen EP, to everything, even that. No, nah, I know. I didn't even listen to anything. But you would have seen even from that that I was enjoying a lot of their earlier stuff more than their later stuff. And that's the thing, because I don't enjoy a whole ton of their earlier stuff, but I enjoy their middle period. Or what is now their middle period, but it's That's now going to be like their second era. The Georgie oh, Fruit yeah. one started off strong, but it got really, really boring. Yeah, the Georgie Fruit thing was interesting for a while, but then it, like I like False Priest a lot, and you don't. And that's fine. Yeah. But then now, like now, their thing is like covering different sounds and different genre eras, and so I think Lousy was like the '60s kind of stuff. And stuff to do after that's more seventies, eighties, and this is like the eighties synth pop. So whatever's next is probably gonna be nineties grunge, and I'm really looking forward to that. And now for what I am hoping for out of Australia you get again. Two thousands new metal. Uh, that would be. Well, I'm still waiting for King Gizzard oh to do a God. Scar album. I want to see Kevin Barnes do new metal. That'd be so great. <laughs> okay, just... on the topic of new metal. Have you noticed that literally every fucking Lincoln Park song has the same cl- goddamn chord progression? And so will every have Montreal song on that album in like five years or less. I am going to put on my wish list a band that has no proof of putting anything out next year or pretty much ever again, but hopefully they do, is the band Fantastic Furniture. So I believe number like in my 40s or 30s, I put the song Don't Know How to Keep Loving You by Julia Jacqueline. I'm now just actually searching where I put that, because I put that pretty high. Number 47 on my top 100 songs. I had Julia Jacqueline's Don't Know How to Keep Loving You. Julia Jacqueline, well, she, as a solo artist, has been around for a couple more years. In 2018, she and her roommates put out the album and kind of self-titled of their band Fantastic Furniture, which mm-hmm. is a goddamn excellent album straight to um, start to finish. It's not like a whole, oh, this is the best of 2018, but for what it tries to be and everything, it it's pretty damn, damn good. So I am hoping they return in 2020 or somewhere in this decade with a new album that starts to kind of make them have a bit more unique of a sound, kind of develop into this great garage pop band that I feel like they actually had the potential to be. I'm pretty sure there's a new uh, Adult Mom album coming out now that the whole Tiny Engines controversy is done. That'd be cool. Is it just Stevie complaining gonna... about Tiny, uh, Tiny Engines for uh, for 35 minutes? Because I'll listen to it. Me too. Yeah, I would listen to that. A, a minor trend that I'm interested in covering more in 2020 is the like old rock groups coming back with new albums. That seems to be happening again. I mean, the Slipknot album this year was not that bad. Do like last year's Ace Freely album. Oh my god, it's so fucking bad. It's awesome. Which one? The the Ace Freely's last album. Okay. He's a uh, because lead I, guitar, ex lead guitarist right. for Kiss. Because the Who just put out a new album. Uh, oh, this on. month, the be- last month. The best part of the Who is goddamn dead, and I'm not just saying that. John and Twizzle. But then, uh, the Who. but then. But then next year, Ozzy's putting out a new album. And the Doobie Brothers are putting out a new EP. And so that's like super ancient callback. And I'm really interested to see what that sounds like in 2020. Now for an album that I know 
Mia and Dominic would probably be quite ready for, which is already announced it's coming out soon. It's going to be the new Algiers. Yeah. See, I don't know how you got into Algiers, Algiers, but I got into Algiers because I think it's one of their drummers, or it is the drummer. It comes from one of my favourite acts of the noughties growing up is Matt Tong from formerly a Black Block, not Black, Block Party. And so I saw that he was in his band, and I gave it a listen. It's pretty good. It's really good. Yeah, for a long time, I, uh, iTunes had, like, free singles you could download. Mm. And Blood from Algiers was one of those singles that I downloaded and really loved. So I haven't heard much besides to... Dispossession, but Dispossession is fucking so good. You should listen to, like, their first album, something mm. like Blood and uh, Irony, something, something. I can't remember the whole name right now. Yeah, it's on my to-do list. Next... I'll put... I'll probably give it a listen, and if I like it, I'll probably order it with the new Algiers record when it the comes first, out. The first Algiers album is really good. Yeah, I've, I've heard nothing but good things about them, and I need to get deep in there. I, think, I need to listen to more. Mm. I definitely need to listen to more. We should cover the 2020 album if it happens. Mm. Uh, also, up... I don't... go ahead and check. Go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, to bring up Max Marco for the third time uh, in a row for these recordings, uh, I'm hoping he releases the demos for Here Comes the Cowboy. Yeah, actually, that would be pretty so fun like to go demos. for it. Yeah, Mac always so like releases demos, demos. demos. He always releases demos. Yeah. Those are songs are so stripped down to begin with. Like, what could the demos be? Demos are so low. Just him with an acoustic guitar. Yeah, and they're usually not Fair even enough. close to mastered at all. No, like, Fair listen enough. to the song um, Harrison Ford Escort, and it got somehow got turned into Freaking Out the Neighbor. Okay. Now, one that uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be too hyped for, but, you know, because looking at their discography, I, I think they've only, only got one album that I could say is a good album, but it's going to be potentially the last Crywank album ever, as they have plans to end the band next year after putting out one more album. I still have not listened to any Crywank. Uh, tomorrow is yesterday, and yesterday is stupid or whatever it is. The one with the dog biting its own tail as the cover. That I can say yes. is probably their only good album start to finish. I have I've seen that album cover, I just I haven't listened to it. It's it's it it, it's a good album, but it is incredibly angsty. I will give it a listen. One band I'm always optimistic will make their big comeback. Finally, finally. Got you. Finally. Green Day. They released an album. They got their album. You'd you'd have better hope for Got Yeah. I mean, their new album, Father of All Motherfuckers, comes out in February. So, I mean, there's a shot. I don't know. I want I want it, I want it to be good. American Idiot was so good for its time. Honestly, yeah, and I, I'll I'll even give it in such uh, 21st Century Breakdown was good. And like Dookie was Dookie, you know. Yeah, so, like, I mean, they they can they can pull it together. <laughs> Also, their last uh, album release was 2016. New Dune Rats, new Hockey Dad, new Violent Soho, there's, and possibly a new DZ Death Ray as well, so in there, because I think they had plans to do a part two to Positive Rising, although I wasn't too fond of that. Mostly the Hockey Dad, Dune Rats, and Violent Soho. Dune Rats have already announced that the album's coming out in February. I've actually got tickets to go see him live in March uh, next year, and they are really fucking fun to, uh, to see live. Because I saw them a long time ago, back when they were open, actually, for Violent Soho. And that's yeah. th- their kind of tactics to just literally just grab anyone from the audience that they can to do a shiri straight up. That's cool. Uh, one of their first festival debuts, they literally opened their set by chugging a drink and then just doing the loudest burp they could into the microphone. Uh, so, pull, pulling a me. Yeah. And that's how they started uh, off their I'm... set. <laughs> Okay. I'm hoping for I'm hoping for a new against me. That'd be cool. I'd like to see that. Because I, I uh, against I me is the the transgender one, isn't it? Oh, my fancy else. Yeah, because yeah, I, I yes. went back and listened to their last album, and well, it is, I don't think it's her best work. It's pretty good. I've never been I've never been much into yeah? against me, so I haven't really listened much. The, the I'm not. Uh, what was the last one they did? Um, the one that. With the pink girl link- licking the boots. Oh, Shape Shift with me? Yeah, Shape Shift with me. Okay, I did not know that existed. I need to check that out. It's it's alright. 
like uh there's uh just some lines in it that are uh feeling like I need to fall down some stairs, maybe lie in lay lay face down in the river and float. Stuff like that. It's just some of it's a mood. Yeah, I can I can imagine. DMA's album next year comes out the day before my birthday, so that's that's definitely a sign, seeming as their last album uh for now was my number two of twenty eighteen. Every time you say DMA or type DMA, I think of DMX. And I'm like, why is Riddle so excited for DMX? Every time I say DMA, so I can only think of MDMA, so we got different things in our mind. I'm thinking that's, that's of, uh, of DMT. That's close enough, actually, to where I'm thinking. Tricks, you're cool. That makes, that makes me think of TMJ. Which, uh, Jamie, pull that up. Anyway, DMA is, is a Australian, like, really dear me because they're in the same city as I am not in the same suburb but the same city and they have an incredibly Britpop sound to the point in which one of the Gallagher's had said that just a rip off oh so it's probably good although but that's the Gallagher's so they call everything a rip off of them uh, so, probably call so I have a question I have a question them. will I be banned if I suggest that we cover the new Evanescence album Nope. You Wake get you get up. you get me up inside. That gets you banned. What were you gonna say, Gorilla? I was gonna say you gotta get a bunch of stairs, but you weren't gonna get banned. If you gotta start shouting like that, then you get a ban. I'm not gonna start shouting like that. I like those songs, okay, but like yeah, I, I just I, wanna I know what problem. it sounds like. You know what? When the Evanescence gets covered, I'm just gonna get my girlfriend into uh, to do it instead. Like, it's not even like I particularly like Evanescence. I think those songs are super cheesy. I just want to know what that what Evanescence sounds like in 2020. Uh, I've never been much into Evanescence besides Call Me When You're Sober. I thought, like, as a kid, that was the only song I could really, like, actually listen to. But even that, as an adult, I don't go back through it. <laughs> Although it has, like, stuck in my head enough as an actual, like, yeah, I don't mind how this one sounds too much. So but bring me to life. Bring me to life. I could just never get into. I, I, and I, a lot of people love it. I'm actually not going to go at Evanescence, believe it or not, because they actually, these are the types of people that actually seem like they genuinely care about the music that they're making. Even if you don't like it, they genuinely actually care about what they're making and they're genuinely just having fun. And you oh, can't, yeah. you can't I mean, really go with that. You can't. That's, that's, I, that's good enough. You like, can do whatever you want. Bring me to life. <laughs> Bring me to life of my immortal were kind of like early 2000s memes just because yeah, they yeah. were overused and inserted in places and that's kind of the fun of it remember that like, great, I don't have anything great them. fan fiction my immortals remember when oh, both uh, that, that's what Devil i was the thinking movie? too i love that fan fiction. that's that's a great fan fiction i've only i've only wa- i've only listened to like the first half of it because i just kept cringing so hard <laughs> The, the, the fan fiction of my immortal is also super great and i highly suggest anyone check it out if you like harry potter and one like of the best things I best. saw, like, early 10s is someone, like, this YouTube channel decided that they were going to make a live-action version of it. And I got a, cu- yeah, I got a couple better, episodes it's... in. It was pretty funny. I, I'm going to shout out... A... Go ahead. I was going to be controversial. If you want to go first, that's fine. I was just going to say, I'm going to shout out a, another podcast and say... Listen to the Potterotica podcast now, Sangasm, because some of that shit is fucking hilarious. And I don't know if he's still alive, because the last time I checked uh, his YouTube channel, and this was like really early in high school, he had an update saying that he had cancer, so he could be dead for what I know. Oh. But there was a oh. YouTuber called Picol444444, and he did fancy readings of terrible fan fictions, and that was great. It was like two minute ones. <laughs> And he was would... that, that he did one of my immortal, didn't he? No, I didn't do my immortals. He did stuff like um no. the the Lust Star, which was a Super Mario sixty four uh fan fiction in which one hundred and twenty ninth star was the mm-hmm. Lust Star, which causes a sex scene between Princess Peach and Mario. Isn't there a way? Uh... And he, he would perfectly pronounce he would perfectly pronounce all the words as they were spelt. So if it had a typo, he would s- s- pronounce it with that typo and he perfectly yes. flowed it was beautiful okay uh, on a side note isn't like the longest piece of english fiction ever like a super smash brothers brawl fan fiction yeah it's brawl in the family mm. 
Anyway, my main controversial statement was that uh, My Immortal is a better Harry Potter sequel than anything J.K. Rowling has written after the last Harry Potter. That's not that controversial, honestly. No, that, you're completely dead on accurate. I'm pretty um, sure Jake. I'm, I'm pretty sure Jake Child is one of the most disappointing things I've ever read in my life, and that's a play. I haven't, I I haven't read it. I just, it just irradiates disappointment. Uh, one the of Chris Child is movies. is like watching someone try to write slash fiction and then isn't like, it fan do a fiction detour. That she just made canon. Yeah, I think it, so. it, 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 it it's it reads so. like that. It it reads like that she gave them an outline and then the playwrights did whatever they wanted, including not making Harry and Draco's sons hook up when they totally should have. <laughs> okay, you need to listen to Potterotica. Like, the whole play is based on Harry's and Draco's son's friendship, and they even have, like, scenes of, like, like, basically, like, Romeo and Juliet-esque scenes of them being kept apart from each other. You ever wonder if J.K. And Rowling so... is just trolling us at the older fanfiction that happened with Harry Potter and just said, fuck it, it's now all canon? Everybody is shit. And it's like you, you read it because I, like, I, you know, I would bit. do that if I was a writer and this like yeah. that's created a massive tree empire, and every fan fixes it, like everyone's having gay sex with each other. I would just go and say fuck it, it's canon. You think so? Yeah, you on think the, so. On the topic of Harry Potter fan fiction, there's apparently a really good one called like Harry Potter the Mes- Methods of Science or something like that. It's like super long and it's kind of edgy. Is that where they figure out how to counter guns? <laughs> I cast a spell on you, shoot, done. Oh no, the I, bullets. The mighty punch wizard cast fist. See, that's like what I... Have us up, but... You go to classic movies, and you, I, it's one of the best moments of um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, is when you have that whole sword fight. Like, you have this guy and that's coming up with the sword, the and he shoots him. And it's, out of all these and action that... movies, it's, it's unexpected, and it's great. And you have all this and stuff where was, bullets don't seem to exist. That was ad libbed too, because like yeah. George, uh, not George Harrison, Harrison Ford wasn't feeling well, and so he's like, ah, "Can't I just shoot him?" And Steven Spielberg thought it was just so fucking hilarious. He said, "Yes." Actually, like, not not to correct you, but like that, the whole story is that like most of them had food poisoning that day, so they yeah. all were not feeling well. Ah, I think there's a story of um, the dude. The dude who's like the helper guy who's supposed to be Middle Eastern, but you know the actor totally isn't. Yeah, I forget his name. He talks about shitting his pants in a scene. <laughs> like some some stuff I know because that in it one... was just that bad. I know that in one I... reshoot, uh, the Nazi guy isn't even there. It's just like his coat draped over the seat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I need to go back and rewatch those now. My 2020 wishes. I hope for another director's cut of Raiders of the Lost Ark. This time, replace all, we the, get that, all the guns with walkie we get talkies. That Chris Pratt. We get that Chris Pratt fucking Indiana Jones. No, 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 no replacing. No, no, no more. Let Indiana Jones die with Harrison Ford. We don't need that to come well, back. Doesn't, he, doesn't Harrison Ford want to do a fifth Indiana Jones? They're making a fifth one. They're making a fifth yeah. one. But that was the original plan was to make five, and that was it. And then Chris, uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was just that bad. See, I let Harrison die. I and saw that in the theaters. Like, I, that can go away. I don't mind. I don't care. That's I saw that on like because uh, back when I was like in year five, was year six when it was happening. I was on a rugby team and we got to do a trip to New Zealand. It was pretty cool, actually. It was saw some other yeah. shit. And anyway, um, we had I think it was either on a flight or somewhere. We ended up seeing uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I think it might have just been a pirated version of it, knowing New Zealand nice. and Australia at the time. And I can still remember just how bad the fridge scene is to this day. Oh, yeah. I saw that in theaters. I also saw the E.T. of Redo when they did the walkie-talkies in theaters as well. That was my first time seeing E.T., and I don't care about E.T., and maybe that's why. I saw it on VHS. So I don't just know. don't want to rush anything, but... Going with these 30 minute times, we have five minutes, so let's go out with some more wish list. I want to see if Grimes can redeem herself in life in general, and not just with her album. But I'm, I, I, wanna, I wanna listen to her album too. Yeah, no, I'll listen to it as well. A Bombay Bicycle Club, hoping for that. Birds of Tokyo, you never know, because the Universus is one of the best Australian albums of all time, but recent Birds of Tokyo is their weakest of all time. Yeah. 
obviously the new Tame Impala, because I'm a sad, sad white boy. we got some other emo shit in the Australian underground scene that I'm hopeful for. Oh, Sam Smith there. is going to drop a new album as the, the first major gender-neutral musician artist, I think. Like, the major, major. Most importantly, new Jungle Giants. Getting that, finally getting a fuller up to cry ferocity. I'm hoping for some more or less playful myself. His like just his bass is ooh. Um, the artists I'm really content. hopeful are hopeful for are the artists that we haven't heard before or haven't come up, and they finally just break through, and we get some incredible new music to listen to, because that happens every that year. That is also good. And those are the artists that you can't predict, and that's what I'm more hopeful for. Because I had a couple artists this year, which I'll just name a couple of them, which I had not even knew existed before that this year. Now, some of them, obviously some uh, supergroups got formed. OK Moon, which is actually a supergroup of a bunch of Australian folk singers. And those are stuff that you kind of, uh, yeah, pop up. But acts like Glass Beach, Be About Doobie, which like, got pretty high on my top 100 songs. Acts I didn't even know existed four months ago. You know who else didn't know existed before this year? Aiden Alexander. I think my life was a little bit better before that. Yeah. I think you're the only one really hyped for Aiden Alexander, but you do you. Same thing with Devin Town. I, I mostly do Aiden for the meme, kind of. I mean, I like Aiden. I like his Twitter presence, but I'm not, like, salivating for a new album. It's just kind of the fun of it. I'm more looking forward to new Devin Townsend, even if I thought Empath was, like, too positive metal for me. You guys are just too happy. Uh... Good one. Thank you. I worked hard on it. Is that a podcast for us? Is this 2019 for Dissonant Waves? We're Possibly. going out this this new waves with a fart. Let's <laughs> not. How about this? I am also looking forward to seeing all the One Direction. Uh, people do their solo careers in 2020 as well as 2019. It's interesting to see who floats and who sinks. I think they were all going to sink, actually. I don't know. I don't think any of them actually really had enough uh, personality to be, like, the big One Direction uh, start. It's not like the Beatles in which uh, it was everyone but Ringo. Right. And Ringo had a career narrating Thomas the Tank Engine with George Carlin and Alec Baldwin. I'll get on Ringo. We gotta put that right on the fridge, boy. It's a fucking yeah. It's not a fucking um. Oh fuck! It's a Family Guy. Dude. There you go. I'm I'm stupid. And then Weezer's putting out a new album called Van Weezer. So... Oh god, that's, that's supposed... just... actually if it's a cover album again, I'm probably a bit more hyped. They're fun, I want to do cover albums at this point, because the, their original is just so boring and bland. We should do a cover album episode, that'd be cool for 2020. Kieran J. Callum, and that's, that's, that's just what I'm choosing straight up. I'll do a Ninja Sex Party under the cover. I'll find something to do. We'll figure it out. And with that... That's a podcast. That's going that's, to that's be 2019. 2019, completely wrapped up. The dissonant waves. Look forward to 2020. Yes. We'll be there soon. I have been Riddle. By the time you hear this, you can catch me at riddlewithkids.github.io if you manage to hear that over everyone else. I also have a YouTube channel that's in the description below. Don't forget to check out the dissonant waves Twitter. It's like just dissonant waves on Twitter. That's, yeah, very hard. Um, I'm Dominic. You can find me at TiltingWindowStudios.com. It's all completely linked below, too, but I'm also on Twitter at D-A-C-I-C-H-O-C-K-I. It's been fun this year. I enjoy doing this. I hope we all have an even better next year. I've been tricks, and I don't have 2020 vision. I hate tricks right now. He's making me cringe. She, sorry, I fucked it up. That's fine. Don't take just a say it's fine. You. Stand up for yourself. No. I've had I've had a, I've had a full year to learn this and I still can't.
Yeah, not quite I a pull. I am a dumb shit. I can't think of anything else to go with the rhythm of this song. Thank you. Dominic okay, cut it off. Sorry. Anyway, let's cut it off. Oh, God. Good night, everybody. Good night.